I've been living with cancer now for six years, so when I go back and think about what the actual day was like, I can sort of describe that and things that have sort of followed from that. But um, I can tell you, actually, I was diagnosed on February 21st uh, in 2006. I can even tell you the time of the day. I could probably tell you what I was wearing at that time. It was very, you know, obviously a, a very major event in my life. Um, the thing about the diagnosis, actually, is that it really feels like free fall. All of a sudden, somebody gives you this information, and then you're like, oh my gosh, what's next? How am I going to deal with this? Um, I am a primary care clinician by training, so I had a general sense of what it meant. I knew at that point that we were probably talking that I'd be somewhere between a stage three or a stage four, so I had a reasonable idea that things were not going to be looking good. Had a period um, where I was sort of recovering from the treatment for my stage three, and then unfortunately in October of 2008, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. My breast cancer was HER2 new positive, and uh, as a result of that, most of my therapies have been targeted, pretty much targeted therapies uh, related to the HER2 new. Well, the, the whole concept behind understanding that there was a subtype of breast cancer called HER2 just came from observing that there's clinical variability in the outcomes for patients with breast cancer. And then we started to study those breast cancers genetically, looking at the DNA and the RNA, and found the HER2 alteration in about a third of breast cancers. That one third of patients had a much different outcome, a much more aggressive subtype of breast cancer. So they recurred more quickly, and unfortunately they succumbed much more quickly, given uniform therapy. We then sort of said, why is it associated with a bad outcome? Either it's a marker for it, or it's associated with it because it's playing a role in causing that. And that was the time when we really realized we may have something. We may have a target that we could go after. I really wanted to participate in clinical trials. And I wanted to do that as a clinician because I wanted to give something back if that was possible. And I also felt it was the best environment for me, particularly with her two new, and knowing that there were a lot of things coming down the pipeline and I could potentially benefit from that. Oh, I feel it's incredibly important. Um, it has, um, first of all, for me personally, it's given me the option to sort of get, you know, state of the art things that are coming directly out of the pipeline. And obviously, it, the therapies that are out now, there are a significant advancement in terms of being able, particularly around targeted therapy. Um, you know, for instance, the TDM1, I had two years of, you know, relatively targeted therapy where I was able to have a very, very high quality of life um, at the same time that I had a very good and, and result uh, from, the, from the TDM1. And um, overall, I just feel it's a, it's a very positive place to be. There are studies that have on gone that have, looked, that, have, that have looked at patients who have been treated with standard of care versus patients on clinical trials for the same diseases, and it turns out in general the outcomes are better for those patients on study. Now it may be because they're followed in a rigorous way while they're on clinical trials, and that certainly could be part of it, but any benefit is a benefit, and I think that's the good news for patients. I'm not just enrolled in the protocol, I'm enrolled in the protocol in the context of my clinical team, which is very important. If someone said, you know, just go take this drug and, you know, check back in a month and we'll do this, that, that's not what I get. Um, I get, you know, a full description of the drug, how it works, um, what the potential side effects are, how to potentially modify that. People give me expectant management so I know what to do if things come up so I don't have to sort of guess along the way. They're not research subjects, they're colleagues. They're collaborators in every sense of the word in this process of moving the field forward. So we owe them a huge debt of gratitude for their willingness to participate in clinical research. The field wouldn't move anywhere without that. It doesn't matter who the physician is or the scientist or the investigator or the trial design. Uh, the patients are what it's all about and their participation is what makes it happen. I think the advice I would say is uh, be patient with yourself. Um, I think that this experience has been a, it's an incredible learning experience as you move through it. I think um, learning and adjusting to something like metastatic breast cancer and trying to sort of sort through what the future holds for you um, takes a lot of practice and you have to be patient with yourself. 
And you do have to get yourself, I think, to an environment where you feel comfortable, where you feel you're working with a good clinical team who has your best interests at heart, and, uh, and learn that you can't really do it by yourself. You need to have other people help you and guide you through it, which is incredibly important.